Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm here with Dr. Anthony. He is the doctor at Fountain of Youth Chiropractic located in Campbell. Uh, Dr. Anthony, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you practice. How's it going guys? So I'm a chiropractor here and I specialize in spinal decompression. Um, so uh, there's a lot of people talking about spinal decompression and what we exactly do. So we treat spinal disc bulges, spinal disc herniations, spinal stenosis or spinal disc degeneration right and a lot of people will throw around the word sciatica as well so mm -hmm. we do treat all those things um, we treat spinal decompression in a specific way right we have these machines here and you're going to see some videos about it but how we treat it is by adding an axial decompression onto the spine using a machine right everything is tailored to you and customized to you so we choose a specific disc level that we're treating it's set on the machine to a specific angle a specific weight depending on the patient and it applies an axial force on the spine at that specific level now it's applied over 25 minutes we do a one minute pull at the top it relaxes about half the weight uh, for 30 seconds and then it does that over 25 minutes so you're gonna get a pumping of the disc. It's gonna help to reduce any disc bulges, right? It's also gonna bring fluid and nutrients back into that disc, right? It's gonna help to rehydrate that disc and actually create a physical change, right? What that also does is reduce any pressure that you may have on a disc bulge, right? So when that disc is pushing on that nerve, it's gonna open up that spine and to help relieve that pain. When you have that pressure on that nerve, it's gonna cause that pain to go down the leg, right? If it's in the low back or if it's in the neck, it's gonna go down the arms, hands, fingers, and shoulders, right? So that's caused when you have a disruption of the central material at the disc, what happens is that fluid can bulge, it can put pressure onto that nerve, right? And again, that's where people throw around that word sciatica. So sciatica is that symptom of pain down the leg Right, and it be, can be caused by a few different things, but the main one is if it's not going all the way down the leg, right? If it's going down in specific parts of your leg, then that's gonna be indicative of a spinal disc lesion or spinal disc bulge. Right. And just to um, kind of demystify a word that's thrown out there, um, disc herniation or like a disc bulge, can you just kind of go over what that is exactly and how that happens? Yeah, so a disc bulge is actually happens when you have a disruption of the central material and there's different levels of severity that can occur, right? So a small bulge to a full-blown herniation where the fluid is actually, you know, impinging onto the spine or you can have little parts floating around uh, like a word called sequestration, mm -hmm. right? So different levels or severities of that disc bulge, but yeah, it's essentially you tear the outside lining, right? Just like a jelly donut, right? If you break the outside of that donut, the fluid's gonna bulge, it's gonna start to leak. And then over the long run, that's when you get a condition called spinal degeneration, mm. right? And that just happens over time where the disc height actually becomes less, mm. right? And that's when the nerve actually becomes pinched down over time right because you don't have the structures to support that that nerve flow right so it's just like the wearing down of you know as we have in our knees where they say it's bone on bone mm -hmm. yeah essentially that's what happens in the disc gotcha and you mentioned i kind of went over it earlier but what are some of the specialties or modalities they use to treat uh, these patients so we have a full spinal decompression program and that's going to include the spinal decompression table that's a 20 to 25 minute session, right? Then we follow that up with some ice and electric muscle stimulation that helps to break down any muscle spasms that you're having, helps to re-educate the muscles, flush out inflammation or swelling in the area. We'll also apply a cold laser that helps to energize the cell, starts the healing process, uh, induces some fibroblastic activity in the cells. We will also follow that up with spinal manipulation therapy, getting the chiropractic adjustments, of course, and we'll follow that up with a little bit of arthrostim and a little bit of massage gun as well, right? So we like to focus on all the parts of the body um, or all the parts of the areas that are being worked on. Mm -hmm. So it seems like when, when a patient comes into here, it's not just like 
typically when you think about a chiropractor, oh, I'm just gonna go and get my back right. Right, oh, yeah. there's, there's a whole lot more that goes on to treatment. Oh yeah, and with the spinal decompression program, like I said, it's all customized to you, so we don't put anyone on that table unless they have x-rays, MRIs, so I can identify what level is actually the, the injured level, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not guessing with any patients, I'm not putting them on unless I see what's going on. Um, you know, we wanna be sure about what we're doing. We don't wanna waste people's time. Okay. Uh, do you happen to have like a certain population of patients that you treat or is it just mostly like all ages that come in? Uh, it, it can be all ages. You know, we've seen younger patients, uh, they'll typically have your disc bulge, disc herniation, mm -hmm. injury, you know, typically from sports, weightlifting. Um, yeah. You know, we do have a lot of workers, you know, your blue collar workers doing the heavy lifting, right. construction. Right. You also have the older population where they're experiencing more of that arthritis, that spinal degeneration, mm -hmm. and you know they just need that uh, decompressive force onto that spine. Gotcha. Now let's let's take into account uh, what area we live in and the type of workers. Say you have a tech worker that wants to stay active, goes to the gym a few times a week, tries to go for a really heavy deadlift on a Saturday, and pop something. Feel, I feel something in my back. Mm -hmm. They come into your office. Uh, so how do you uh, approach uh, this patient? So with an injury like that, right, we always think, okay, it could be something like a sprain or strain. Mm -hmm. It depends on how severe the injury is and where their symptoms are, right? If they're experiencing any neurological symptoms like burning, tingling, or numbness, we're immediately thinking, okay, it might be a disc injury, mm -hmm. right? If they're thinking, okay, it's more muscular, it just feels sore and tight in one area, then we might treat them with some spinal adjustments, a okay. um, little bit of muscle stimulation, right? And treat it like a muscle sprain or strain for six to eight weeks, yeah. right? Um, if it's not improving over that time, then we can pretty much safe to say, hey, we need to go get some imaging done, right. right? Now, if it's severe where, okay, I was on the floor, I couldn't get up, mm -hmm. right? Or I have that burning pain down the leg. Right. Yeah, it goes right to a specific part of my leg. Oh, the bottom of the foot, mm -hmm. things like that, inside of the toe. Mm -hmm. We're immediately thinking, yeah, let's go get the imaging done, right? right. Most likely, you know, I'm gonna send out for an MRI. I wanna see the best image possible, right? I wanna be able to fully evaluate the injury. Yeah. And then we'll set that up. Once I get the images, we'll look at it together. Right? Mm -hmm. So the patient will actually get to see their images. I'll explain what's going on. Right. And then I'll give them a few options for treatment, uh, most likely spinal decompression. Okay. Now you work in a practice that has multiple practitioners. Mm -hmm. um, how would you say that workflow goes? Uh, do you kind of, are you able to treat each other's patients or you have your own separate patient base? Yeah, so we have our own independent uh, practices. So he's got his own patients, I've got my own. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a front desk staff that we share. Yeah. They're taking care of, you know, most of the stuff that's going on. So as a staff driven practice, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we focus on the adjustments, the consultations, you know, looking at x-rays, MRIs, we're making sure everything's running smoothly. Yeah. They're the ones, you know, that are helping us out. They're our extra pair of hands. So, okay. Yeah, we can run our businesses independently, and yeah. because we have so many rooms, you know, we can have, uh, you know, eight to ten different patients in at the same time. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I actually I found you through your social media campaign, uh, mostly on like Instagram and Facebook. Would you mind shedding some light on how that works? Oh yeah. So digital marketing is going to be key, especially for starting a practice. Mm -hmm. um, you you really want to get your name out there and. Okay. Uh, creating a brand name is going to be important. Mm. Uh, so I pay for digital marketing. I use a marketing company that basically manages all that for me. Yeah. You know, we pay a management fee and also your ad spend, mm. right? Um, it does help, right? It's going to bring patients in. It's going to give you that visibility, especially to people in your area. It's all targeted to those specific areas that you're looking for. So. You know, if you're interested in doing, uh, you know, a good volume of people, mm -hmm. you got to get on your marketing, yeah. especially yeah. with digital marketing. It's a new age. Yeah. Everyone's on their phones. Yeah, yeah. Especially, uh, you know, during that pandemic area. Right. You know, right. everyone's just looking at their phones, yeah. looking on their computers. Okay. And do you have, uh, let's say, like a five-year long-term plan of where you see yourself in the future? Um, just to keep uh, improving our you know, facility, okay. right? We wanna 
get those machines fully booked all the time, yeah. help as many patients as possible. Um, but yeah, just enjoy life, you know, mm. go on good vacations, yeah, eat yeah. good food, Definitely. you know, stay fit and healthy. Gotcha. <laughs> and do you, when you treat, when it comes to treating patients, do you have a specific mindset or like a philosophy in how you approach patient treatment? So I try to take a conservative approach to it, right? And definitely a holistic approach. You know, I don't want to tell patients, uh, go take, you know, painkillers and things like mm -hmm. that, you know, as much as they can. Um, let's heal it naturally. Mm -hmm. Let's do some chiropractic. Let me show you some stretches and exercise to do. You know, I have a personal training and kinesiology background, so okay. I always yeah. believe in uh, the, the mobility, flexibility stuff. Yeah. Um, I do think we need to stay conservative on, you know, what we're doing with our patients and yeah. not being over the top. My adjustments are, you know, relatively light and gentle. Yeah. I don't think we need to be trying to break people in half to, to get a crack yeah. or a pop, yeah. you know? So uh, I take a conservative approach with chiropractic, mm -hmm. but if it's spinal decompression, you know, I follow the research on it. And mm -hmm. the research has shown that 20 to 24 visits is where you're actually gonna create physical changes in the disc. Yeah. So I believe in a systematic approach where you know, we start out light, on that decompression and then increase the weight you know we increase the weight about two pounds every other visit okay so systematically their bodies are you know adapting to that and creating yeah. that physical change okay and we were actually um uh, speaking earlier about this topic about spinal decompression and i've had experience with a flexion distraction table where it kind of brings your spine like this versus the modalities you have it's axial and it goes straight like this yeah so that was something that you know i was experiencing and uh, I think that you get the best results from spinal decompression because when you're doing flexion distraction, right, you're creating that flexion again, mm -hmm. which you have a, a posterior disc injury, the nerves are all on the back here, right? Mm -hmm. There's no nerves here in the front. So doing extension is okay, but when you do that flexion, mm -hmm. right, you're creating more uh, pressure towards that nerve. Okay. So those sitting, that's why sitting, bending forward, right. all of those things right. are the ones that's causing that flare up or the aggravation of yeah. the disc injury. So we create that axial decompression where we're not creating that flexion. Gotcha. Yeah. So to me, flexion distraction wasn't the best option yeah. for these specific injuries. Yeah. Okay. And then our last question uh, for today is, what is chiropractic to you? Oh, well, chiropractic is you know manipulating or adjusting the spine mm -hmm. right um, we are affecting the nervous system right whatever area you're adjusting you're gonna affect the nerves and the muscular system around it right um, I believe chiropractic is you know creating that mobility bringing back the motion to the restricted joints mm -hmm. right and I think that's right. very important you know we you know focus on that yeah chiropractic you know also includes working on the neuromuscular system, so working on the muscles, showing patients how to be uh, strong, exercise, stretch properly. Um, I think those are all really important things, uh, but yeah. chiropractic specifically is, you know, getting a nice adjustment on that spine, you know, slightly moving right. it. We're not trying to send it all the way to the other side. Right, right, you know, yeah. Just gentle adjustments to create that motion to, you know, back to normal. Great, appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me come in. No problem. Thank Great you. to have you.